What is up, YouTube? Bright and early morning before work. Got all my parts in yesterday, so lots of colony, lots of V-twin stuff. Didn't go crazy on the rebuild, but I needed a lot of stuff. I'm also doing two motors, so I needed case studs and stuff for the second iron head case. I have everything from the XLCH I took apart, but I don't have everything for the other motor, so I figured I'd just order everything now on this last batch. Got the swing arm dust caps and things that I need for the swing arm. Neck cups for the bearings, which are already installed on this freshly coated frame. And then this bag right here, I'm not going to pull everything out because I just went through it all, but that bag has axle spacer stock to cut the axles on the chopper and all of the cam bearings, the main bearing race, I got to press back the sprocket shaft side on the case. That's got to get pressed back in. The oil screen that I got to switch out, cam bearings, and all the other miscellaneous stuff to button up the bottom end, which I will want to use a press for a bunch of that. So that's going to come with me today. Got the cases in the car. Those will be done at the shop later this afternoon. And this is my pile of miscellaneous assembly stuff that's going back on here. Most of it comes in chrome. I don't know if I'm running chrome or not, but quick little update. Well, like I said, uh, we are going to be, sorry about the echo in here, I don't have anything running up at the shop today, so here kind of late tonight, but I'm kind of scrambling to get some of this stuff done. So I showed you earlier, here's the bag of parts that I need, a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Crankshaft, uh, flywheels rather, sorry, I'm used to car things. Flywheels for the iron head are here. Here's the old Timken bearing and the spacer. The new one is in the box. But before I can do anything on that, I got a couple things to prep on these cases. So on the cases, I have one cam bearing kind of slightly rested in there. Figured I'd come up here, press those in. And then, same thing on the crank, I have the new parts. Let me, I'm going to turn you guys around and we'll do a quick little look at the case on the primary side. And I'll show you what we're doing on the sprocket shaft for the crank. So here is the left side, primary side of the case. You have uh, the metal sleeve in here uh, that the race will go into. So this is what we're looking at. What I needed and why this took so long is I need to press these snap rings back in. So I open up the package. You can use the old ones if they're in good shape. Mine were not. So here's the sprocket kit. It comes with two snap rings. Drop them on the floor, of course. These are the little snap rings. This is what bottoms the race out on the inside of the case. So basically what I'm going to have to do here is take the new race and press it into this until it hits this snap ring area. Now, when I prep the cases, these have all been through the degrease tank a ton of times. Wiped everything out, cleared all the passages. Make sure that the two oil passage for the feed and the return, or the drains... Um, that come through this bearing. I don't know if that's going to show up. You can see that hole right there at the bottom. Make sure these are completely free of debris, especially if this case did get sandblasted or coated. Make sure those are clear. <clears throat> you do not want a bunch of sand and grime from blasting to go into that center Timken bearing. So now, like I said, I got the one snap ring in. The case itself has a machined little ridge or a machine slot for that ring to ride in. So the lower one is in, which is really what I was waiting on. Now I can press the race back in. And then, in theory, we could put the crank in, but I don't want to do that only because I forgot, unfortunately, that when I did the case prep video, I never fixed the helicoil on the base stud here. And I have another one on the other side of the case for the oil pump, so I will have to do a little bit of drilling and tapping, and I don't want the bearings in for this. But if the race is in, I'm one step closer, and then it's just a matter of pressing the crank back in. Not that big of a deal. So we'll go over the press, get set up, and then I'll drive this race in. Since my press is not actually fixed anywhere, here is the race. Here's the bearing race we are going to be installing. Grab a rag, wipe this down real quick. Now, like I said, snap ring is seated at the bottom of this case. Make sure everything's nice and clean. I don't want any crap or debris in here. But since the case halves are split, it does chuck up pretty well into the case. That's going to sit there. Now, 
This is the old Timken bearing right here. I'm going to use that as a guide for the driver instead of trying to press it along the outside of the case. So in the press, hopefully I didn't check this for clearance yet, but I'm hoping that this will actually fit. Even if it does fit a little snugly, let's see if I got a little bit more. I really don't want to have to come down more on this. If I was lucky, this would actually drop right down together. I don't know if I'm going to be that lucky. And my guess is, based on how this looks right now, is it will not. So, um, let me adjust here. I'll grab another tool. I'm going to turn this around. My press is on wheels. It's not the best situation. But I haven't decided if I want to put this upstairs or keep it down here on the floor at the shop. I like the idea of having it stay down here. But I never actually know. Now, on the case, there is a little nub here. So we need to kind of adjust this. But I have the old bearing in the race right now. Um, that's not really super important, but this is much easier to use as a guide to start this bearing going into the case. You can use a bunch of different spacers and things in here too to lessen the extent that I have to lower this. But this is what we got. And by using the bearing in between, I'm not pushing on the outside of the race at all, which is kind of nice. That's why I saved the old ones. And this will press fit down into the case. Nice and easy. Now here's where it's going to get a little bit goofy because this is so big. But now that the race is semi started, I can come back up with this. Again, not the best method of doing this, but it's the tools I have. So typically you don't ever want to actually drive anything in from the inside of the bearing, but, or inside of a bearing if this was going to be a final assembly situation. This is not. Instead, I'm using the bearing to push the race in, which is going to buffer the actual race itself. But this will ride on the inside of the crank bearing that's no longer needed. I'll drive this all the way down until we seat on the snap ring. to go too crazy here. It is just a snap ring. Up there, sitting flush. Our race is installed. Bearing comes out. And now our crank new sprocket shaft race is installed. So it's flush on the snap ring down here. Exactly what we're going for. So there's that. Now a little bit more cleaning, then we'll put some assembly lube through some of this stuff before we actually install the bearings. And that is where the new Timken bearing that's on the crank, right here, here's our Timken bearing. This is a brand new bearing. Uh, I also forgot to bring the assembly lube, otherwise I would have tried putting all of this together. But I also want to hit this with the degrease tank and clean this up a little bit too. So I have the old spacer, which I no longer need. Here's the old stuff. I have the new bearing and the new spacer in the box. This is all a fixed kit. Do not, do not, do not mix and match these. And then the last snap ring we need for the outside of the case half over here. 
I don't want to throw that one in yet, but then we also have these seals as well. So before I go any further, I do want to finish the cleanup on the, yeah, yeah, I do want to finish up the cleanup, make sure I'm not getting many metal shavings in here before I do final assembly lube on the bearings and then press these back in. But essentially the crank bearing will come in from this side. It will drop in here. So the crank will come back in like so. This will drop in and get pushed all the way seated. The other bearing will come in from the other side. That part will be a tomorrow project. So now the crank bearing, the sprocket shaft bearing is back installed. We are good to go on that case. Can't do anything until I finish cleaning up and degreasing the crank. Um, it's been bumping around in the back of my car, which also has a bunch of sand. So I gotta do a thorough cleaning on that. I'm not worried about it getting into the rod bearings or anything like that, but the outside of the crank had oil residue. Oil and sand like to stick together really bad. So ton of degreaser, ton of cleaning to do on that one before we put the crank back into the cases. That will be probably tomorrow morning, maybe the end of this video. I haven't figured out how long this will be or what I'm doing for editing yet. But crank races in. Now we can go to the other side of the case and set up some cam bearings. And since I got the press out, I've done this with and without a press. I don't think it's necessary. However, in this case, I don't see why I wouldn't just use it when I have it available to me. I don't need to heat up the case when I do it this way. And they tend to go in much straighter, in my opinion, when you're actually using the press. So let me turn you guys around one more time, get some drivers set up, and we will press in these cam bearings. Here are the cam bearings. And if you notice, I don't know how well this is going to focus. You have two sides. You have a bare side with no letters on it, one side with letters on it. At first glance, they look pretty much the same. They both have a slight chamfer on the outside edge. They're rounded. They're not like a squared off bearing. They're rounded on both sides. The one with your letters on the outside is substantially flatter. Don't know if this will show up. There's your letter markings. No letter markings. If you look at this, there is definitely a rounded radius all the way around on this one, whereas this one is rounded and then flattens off. Flattens off so you can drive it in. So letters. When the cam chest is facing out, you want your letters facing out towards the outside where the cams are going to go. Okay, so quick way to remember, letters on the cam bearings go out towards the camshaft. So we're going to go in from the outside on these. Now, on several of the cases, there is a super, super micro machined lip in here on the inside. It's tiny. It's very easy to break. A lot of the times if the motor has been redone or somebody was sloppy with it, those inner lip parts are broken off. This case, they're broken off. I can see the little chunks here. So what I did was grab a file and re-soften all these edges. So there's nothing on the back side. I don't think I have to worry about that all that much in this case. But know that if you press this like crazy and drive these all the way in or go too far with them, you will split the back side of that case. In this scenario, I'm not too concerned about that, but I am actually, you know what? Let me get, I'm going to get a bigger driver and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, bigger driver. And I'm going to show you why. When I drive these in, all I want these to do is flush up with the case itself. So if I use the smaller one that's smaller than the diameter of the bearing, I run into the weird issue of if the driver is smaller than the bearing, I can actually push this too far, which I'm trying to avoid right now. <laughs> it helps if you plug your uh, bottle jack or close the valve. Now, when you're doing this, you do want to make sure your case is supported on both sides and level. Keep an eye out on your dowel pins. Letters out. Square this up roughly in the bore. I'll move my hand here in a second once I get this to start driving in. Okay. Now. We got this at least slightly pressed in. 
Ooh, super crooked. You don't want to be crooked like that. But this is what happens when I'm sitting here looking at all of this through a phone camera instead of actually putting them in the way I want to. Okay. Let's try that again. go, a little bit of tension on it. And they're not crazy, crazy tight, so you don't have to hook these down. But the reason I'm using the big driver is once the driver hits the case, like so, I'm done. That's all it takes. Cam bearing is in. Now I gotta grab the other ones out of their boxes. Since I did not prepare very well on this at all. I think these are Koyo bearings. I don't know how particular people are about that. It's just like the generic what V Twin gives you. It's the more expensive of the two that they offer. I don't like spending a lot of extra money on things I don't need to, but I've used these in the past without issue. Now, the delicate game of trying not to have to go too far on this for retightening. Slide the case in just a hair. And then the big part is just trying to keep this as straight as possible for now. The other thing you'll run into, which was bad on my part, there we go, bottomed out on the case. I got real close to this lip for the uh, thrust bearing or thrust washer, that two hole washer that you guys are gonna see when we start putting all this back together. Make sure you're staying on the inside of this machined edge because you got the thrust plate I think that's what it's called. The thrust plate that connects these two and connects these two. So you want to stay inside of those. But we'll keep moving on here. Let's move on to the next one. This one I don't think you guys will be able to see unless I come around to the back side. Let's see what you guys get from this angle. Set up a little light here for you. Hopefully that helps a little bit. And like I said, I've done this a couple different ways. I do happen to have a shop press, which whenever I can, I try and use. Again, I just think it drives the bearings in a little bit straighter. Um, it's by no means an absolute necessity. If you have a heat gun or the ability to heat any of these prior, that would also work really well too. I'm not even using the jig on this one. I'm literally just pushing this in. With a finger, like I said, it's not a crazy, crazy tight tolerance or anything like that. I go a hair more on that one, actually. But you just want it to be flush with the outside of the case. Hopefully that showed up because the light just died. I knew that was almost out of battery. I'm surprised I made it as long as I did. Then we got the last one. The last one is a little goofy on the vise. You're going to want a lot of angle here because I don't really have a ton of support on this outside edge of the case. With the current plate setup that I have, but we'll make do. Like I said, if these were a crazy tight press fit tolerance, I'd probably adjust this a little bit more or maybe shim it better. These are not insane or need to be pressed in with a ton of pressure. It's really just uh, as I said, I've done this with a hammer before. If the cases are heated, this goes much smoother and easier. Not completely necessary. I'm running out of meat on the outside case. So I'm literally just catching this with the outside edge of the press, which is extremely wrong. I 
and kind of dangerous. And there we go, bottomed out on the case, and we'll hurry up and get this off. There we have it. Our other halves of the case are in. Uh, done. Cam bearings are in. Obviously, I didn't assembly lube or anything. Some people use Loctite on here. Um, I've seen one or two other videos where people are using like red or blue Loctite. Uh, if I was to lock these bearings in and didn't want them to move, I would probably go with a green Loctite. It's not as common, but I would do a little bit of green Loctite on the outside of this, especially if any of these tolerances on the case themselves are a little worn out. In this case, everything is pretty good. I could actually come in a tiny bit more on these. But now that they're in and seated, if I need to come back to this, I can just grab my driver, a couple love taps with the hammer, flush those up, and we should be good. I purposely didn't want to go too far, only because I know that these lips are broken. I'd rather leave it out and have to push them in a little bit more later on than overdo them and have to come back from the backside, because ideally, in the next day or two, these cases will get glued back together like so, with the crank in between. Well, per usual, in my stupid, horrible, horrible YouTube skill set, uh, just had the camera set up over here, talked for about three minutes while I went through and did all of this, and then realized that the camera wasn't recording. So, let's recap what I just did. Uh, on the iron heads, you have a oil screen at the end of the pump. This sits in here like this. Here's the screen for that that goes in here like so. Now, I blasted these cases so I know that there's crap everywhere and I should have done this before I put the cam bearings in because these are brand new bearings. Well, now I gotta re-degrease this entire case because I was an idiot and didn't pull this first only because I haven't actually had to remove one of these before in the past. This is the first time I'm having to do this. So here was my thought. There's a little set pin in here that drops in through here and holds the screen in place. I had nothing that would grab this, the magnet. So sometimes you can put a magnet in and if, in a perfect world, your magnet will catch it and pull this pin out and then the whole thing comes out as one piece. That was not the case today per usual, like everything on this bike is it's a huge pain in the ass. So what I did was shoved a pick through here broke the screen out of the housing. So here's the screen. There's the hole where I punched it right underneath the pick right there. Broke that out. Once the screen is out, this pin goes through the hole in this plate like so. Well, once the screen's out, I can grab the pin from here, at which point I just hit it with a pair of pliers, needle nose, grab the thing, slid it up just a little bit, then it came free. Now this comes completely out, and we are good to go and replace that with a new one. But if you can see all the sand and all the crap from down in this cavity that, you know, I had this run through a degrease tank, blew it all out with compressed air, cleaned it up as best I could, but there's still sand everywhere because when you sandblast things, I don't care how good you mask it, it goes everywhere. So we have all this crap down at the bottom of the oil filter or oil pump, uh, area. So we're going to go through and re-degrease all of this, make sure none of it got in the cam bearings, blow everything out, re-clean up this case tonight before I go home. Then I can bring it back and finish the, uh, what do I have? Got one helicoil to put in tonight and then one more on the other side of the cases. Let's go to the degrease tank and clean this thing up. If you are doing any sort of motor things at home or at a small shop or whatever it may be, I cannot recommend these enough. They're relatively cheap in the grander scheme of things. Spent a lot more money on things that I use way less frequently than this, especially at the coating shop and powder coating stuff. I use this all the time whenever people bring in like gas tanks, oil tanks, not gas tanks as much, but oil tanks especially. Um, I will use this all the time just to go through and clean some of this stuff up. The degreaser works really well. I do need to get in here with the brush. But right now, I just kind of want to sift through a ton of this right now. This is not the Harbor Freight one, but it's pretty much the same. I don't remember. I think I got this one on Amazon or something, but it does have caster wheels, which for me up here at the shop, when I don't know what's coming through the door tomorrow, 
the amount of floor space that I have in the shop changes significantly based on the jobs that come through. So something on wheels. If I can have everything in my shop be on wheels, I would much more, or much rather have that. Because when things are on wheels, I can move them whenever I need to, quickly and easily. This being a perfect scenario. This usually sits over here on the corner of the big oven second rack or cooling rack. But if I need to put it over in the back corner by the compressor, I can do that too. Nice and easy. I don't have to overly think about it. Like I said, putting the cases together is actually pretty easy. That's the, that's the easy fun part. It's all of this prep and the tedious cleanup that isn't really the most fun. There's no noticeable gains from doing any of this. I'm just going to run this a little bit longer. We're pretty much there in terms of cleaning up all the crap and debris that was in here. And there's probably other people that would take a lot less time and still have it be perfectly fine, and a lot of people that will probably take way more time than I am on this. But when you're doing a full motor, I like trying to make everything be as clean as possible. I'm just going to spritz these bearings real quick. There's no assembly lube or anything on any of these yet. we can because this is going to stink up my car. It is coming right back home with me tonight so I can patch up the rest of the case stuff and I don't want to wait for this to air dry. So here's the case cleaned up. Got the brush in here, cleaned out as much as I could. I think we're in pretty good shape. Now all I got to do is go home, tap these holes. That'll be the end of this video and then hopefully tomorrow I can press the crank back into the case once I get the rest of that done. I do have one more the, so you got the, I press the race in, now there's a spacer seal that gets pressed in, then the snap ring, but the bearing's got to go in between. I didn't bring assembly lube up here, otherwise I would have lubed up the bearing and put it in, but knowing that I have to drill it still, we're going to wait on that. I don't mind the race being in there if I'm still grinding on stuff, but I do not want a greased up bearing in there with metal shavings anywhere near it. So throw this in the car, we'll come back in a couple minutes at the house. I forgot why I didn't get any as far as I wanted to today. Uh, typical me in usual fashion. Browsing on the old Facebook marketplace like I do every day. See what's out there, what's available. And uh, well, I had a couple different oil tank options for this bike. Uh, here's the iron hot chopper that we decided to start doing. Thought that I was going to use the horseshoe tank because I really like the way that looks, but then when I mocked it up, even if I cut it, it sits too far forward. If I run it up here, it doesn't really blend with the seat. Then I thought about using this cool old 70s, I, I don't know, I feel like this was really common on Triumphs, but I didn't want to do a pill style. Well, in my networking and talking to people, a buddy of mine actually just posted a oil tank for sale. Let's pop the door, run out to the car real quick because I forgot to bring it in. Grab the new one again. So now we're on to four oil tanks for one build. Coming back in from the car, we are in motion. Let's see what this thing looks like. It's a stubby hex. So I've run these hex style ones on shovel heads, but they're substantially bigger. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. And I don't have you guys set up on a tripod, but mock-ups are fun. So let's see. Obviously, I have no mounts or no tabs for any of this to make it actually work. I don't know. Do I want to try and run something like this? I have no idea. No idea at all. I think that's definitely for an iron head, just based on how skinny and shallow it is. Don't have the heads or anything else on, but let me know what you guys think. Here's the oil tank options. We got the hex pill style. We got a huge hack and weld project. If I cut up a nice one that I could very easily just bolt onto a shovel head and have it work. Or the in-between, the hexy stubby iron head oil tank. I don't really care about the mounts or fitment or anything like that yet. I'm gonna make all new brackets and go from there, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Well, I'm one of those people that can't leave well enough alone, so 
said I was leaving, packed up the car, got the cases loaded up so I can go re-tap and fix those threads. And I saw the crank, and I'm like, well, if I press this in tomorrow morning, I actually could get to go into work late tomorrow. So I'll be up here bright and early. I got a couple things to blast. This chopper frame in particular. Did a nice preheat to burn off some of the powder stripper off of the front half on those Evos. But uh, got the flywheel all degreased and cleaned up, ready for install. Let this dry overnight, hit it with some compressed air tomorrow. And ideally, if all goes as planned, before I go to work, this will all be back into the left side case. I don't know if I'm doing the full case assembly tomorrow or not. If I do, it probably won't be till later, but I also have Friday off. So Friday, we will start jamming away on the bottom end of this motor.